What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing another list. But a list I think it's very important, especially the way things are today, and the self-reliance that's come along with the last few years. So today I wanted to do a list of guns that you could literally bet your life on. And the way this list came about is, well, I was thinking about it, A, but B, when I do versus videos or comparison videos, I often really break it down to, if this was a serious situation, which one of these would I grab? And out of all my gun collection and out of all the guns that I've shot over the few years, I kind of had to think for a long while about out of all those guns, if it was a big armory, like the, like, you know, like the Matrix scene. So what do you need? Guns. Lots of guns. Which one of those would I grab for which particular situation? So I collected 10 guns that I think you could absolutely bet your life on from a variety of categories. First thing, reliability is paramount. Second thing, it has to have the accuracy, ergonomics, and recoil control, caliber, capacity to do the job, whatever job that might be. Today's job is gonna be self-defense. This is gonna be more of a self-defense, concealed carry, home defense type scenario. There isn't gonna be a lot of zombie apocalypse talk, a lot of competition talk, a lot of shooting at the range talk. These are guns that you use for serious use. I also wanted to get a variety of guns, a variety of actions, a uh, variety of calibers, and a variety of uses. So we've got some rifles, some shotguns, some PCCs, some revolvers, and some semi-automatic pistols, big and small. I wanted to get guns that had track records in military and law enforcement so you could track how reliable and durable they are over a period of time, but I also wanted to use guns that are just obvious. There's some guns out there that are just obviously the right choice because of all those things put together. Before we get into the list, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you, we have most of these guns on the table. Uh, we're an independent channel. We try to give you the most non-biased information possible. Patreon helps us do that. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description. However, YouTube also has their own version. So if you want to do that, you could feel free to send us a super thanks. We spend it on guns and ammo either way. I also want to mention a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please get on that link and donate to those kids. And finally, make sure to like and subscribe the video if you're interested. YouTube loves interaction and you want to support the video. The easiest thing to do is like, subscribe, and share, and leave a comment down below. Let's get into the list, and the order I'm gonna start in is pretty biased. It's literally gonna be the order of which one of these guns would I grab for a home defense situation. So the first one on the list is probably going to be the GP100 from Ruger. And the GP100 is one of the most reliable and time-tested revolvers of all time. It has great ergonomics, and it comes with a very simplistic design. This one here is a 357 4 inch, and it actually holds seven rounds of 357 Magnum. Uh, the four inch is really nice because it's compact. You could still carry it if you needed to. Uh, it's relatively lightweight for a revolver, you know, coming in under 40 ounces. It has iron sights, which are easy and simple to use. Very little to go wrong there, especially in close quarters. We have seven rounds of 357 Magnum with a double action trigger pull, allowing you to squeeze off all seven rounds if needed relatively quickly and reliably. Revolvers are very reliable, especially clean and well-maintained. The Ruger is one of the most reliable reliable of those reliable revolvers. So reliability, capacity, and stopping power, if you want to use that term, I would use capable caliber, all have it right here. Uh, if I was going to grab one of my revolvers for self-defense use, this would certainly be toward the top. And because of that, I trust the Ruger. I have a thousand rounds through, uh, 38 Special, 357, no timing issues, no problems whatsoever. It's a point and shoot gun, and when you're under stress, that's really important. Reliable, time-tested, durable, heavy, and if you've ever seen Snatch, if it doesn't work, you can hit them with it. In at number nine, we're gonna have our Micro 9. We're gonna be talking about the Smith & Wesson Shield or the Shield Plus. I wanted to add a, a small concealed carry gun here. Uh, even though it's more of a home defense video, uh, a lot of people just have one gun, and if you have just one gun, this is a good choice. You're talking about a 10, 12, or 15 round capacity in a gun that's very lightweight, around 19 ounces with a three inch barrel. The reason why I like the Shield, very simplistic. It's got a relatively big slide, so if you have any malfunctions, which you usually won't, it's easy to rack and clear those. It's got an easy, simplistic design with a striker-fired system, good texture to hold onto the gun, and most of all, it's shockingly reliable. Out of all of the 9mm Micro 9s, including the Glock 43X, including the P365, which are also great choices if you're not interested in Smith & Wesson, I would consider this the best. 
the iPad, the Shield, the Shield 2.0, the Shield Plus, and now the Shield Plus Performance. I have over a thousand rounds on every one of those platforms, and it's by far the most reliable Micro 9 that you're gonna get. It'll take all types of ammunition, anywhere from 115 grain to 147 grain, uh, 124 grain plus peas, 124 grain hollow points, whatever you wanna put in this thing, it's gonna work, and that's the most important thing. If I'm gonna bet my life on something, I want it to go bang every single time, and that is what the track record on the Smith & Wesson Shield tells you about the gun. Very reliable, very durable, very robust, awesome, and you can count on it. If you're looking for a Micro 9 and you wanna have it to be shootable enough to be a home defense gun, the Shield Plus also works great for that. It's a small gun, but it's not too small that it's unusable. It's a lightweight, but it's not too light where you can't shoot it rapidly. So great on Smith & Wesson for making, in my opinion, the best Micro 9 on the market. In at number eight, we're gonna have our first full-size semi-automatic pistol, the SIG P226. When I think reliability, and I think durability, and I think time-tested, I think of all of the tests the SIG 226 had to go through in order to be the military's handgun, which it didn't actually end up being adopted, but it was adopted by special forces, including the Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs don't pick trash, so that should give you an idea of what the 226 is capable of. It's been out for you know three decades now, and it's been out performing almost everything in this class since then. It is a double single action traditionally, although this one you see here is the new X5 with the single action only. I would recommend the double single action. Double single action pistols are notoriously reliable if you're talking about the USP or some other guns coming up later in the list. Uh, the double single action is a great design. You get double strike capability. They often work better under adverse conditions, at least in my experience. We have done plenty of torture tests on the channel. And overall, I think the 226 is easily the most reliable and time-tested handgun from Sig Sauer, which makes a lot of great pistols. It has the lineage, it has the nine millimeter capacity of 17 plus one. It has a good barrel length, good ballistics. You have red dot capable, great ergonomics. You can shoot it very fast and accurate along with that reliability and durability. Plus it is a metal frame gun, which means that not only it will be durable, but you can use it as a bludgeon if needed be. <laughs> and on top of that, it just looks sexy. I gotta tell you, it would be hard for me to pass up a 226 if I needed to use a gun for a serious situation, but there are a few better ones that we're gonna get to in a minute. In at number seven, we have the first long gun on the list. And as far as home defense guns, I like long guns better than I like handguns. Handguns have their purpose, don't get me wrong. It's great to have a handgun for home defense. It's an all-purpose gun, you can carry it and then you can take it home. And if somebody answers your door at night or knocks on your door at night, you can kind of sneak tip go up there armed, whereas it's kind of hard to do with an MP5. <laughs> that being said, if you're in a defensive engagement, a long gun is always better. As Melvin Purvis once said, nothing beats a good machine gun, and in this case, a long gun is a great choice. MP5 is a good choice not only for home defense just because of its reliability, durability, and track record, and believe me, there is no sub gun on earth that has a track record like the MP5 does. These things, even four decades later, are still being used all over the world for military and law enforcement. Reason being is pistol caliber carbines are lightweight, they're easy to use, low recoil, and on top of that, for a home defense situation, using the right ammunition, hollow points, things like that, you don't get near as much over penetration as you would with a shotgun or rifle or something like that. Plus you can use the same ammunition out of your carry gun and use it right in here as well. And a long gun is easier to shoot, especially under stress because you have more points of contact. You have your hand on the front, you have your hand on the grip, you have your uh, face on the cheek weld and you have that shoulder stock in your shoulder. It, allowing you to intuitively aim under stress a lot better. Red Dot capable, uh, a 29 round magazine capacity, YouTube. But uh, overall, I think the MP5 is the standard for pistol caliber carbines. And if you're looking for one, like if you're gonna get a pistol caliber carbine, that's what you've decided to do for home defense, I think it's hard to beat something like an H&K SP5 or SP5K. If you're looking for a little bit cheaper, that's fine. The clones also work great. I have the ZF5 or even the PTR is an amazing choice as well for about half the price this is. Uh, this is an eight inch nine millimeter, so you're gonna get more ballistics than you would from a handgun. You're also gonna get more capacity, it's gonna be easier to shoot. You get the roller delayed design of the MP5, which has made it very famous. Not only is it reliable, durable, simple, but it also has very, very low recoil, and for all new shooters, they absolutely love the MP5. When I come out and we shoot rifles with people who've never shot rifles before, one of the first guns I give them is this, because not only does it look cool, but it has low recoil, and the noise itself is very unintimidating by comparison to something like an AR-15 or something like a 7.62, for example. 
That being said, still works just as good, especially in CQB distances. I'm a big fan of the SP5, MP5 series, and it's hard to beat. In at number six, we are gonna have our second revolver on the list. Now, this is only a six shot, but they do come in seven and eight shots, but we're gonna be talking about Smith & Wesson large frame revolvers, specifically the 686. Smith & Wesson revolvers for me have been by far the most reliable brand of revolvers that I've used over the years. They're simple, they're easy, I like their controls, and if I had to pick a revolver to use for self-defense, it would probably be this one. This is not the most expensive gun in my collection. These come in only about five to six to seven hundred dollars depending on where you get them but it does have a full six inch barrel and it is another 357 magnum a six inch barrel pumping out 357 magnum is no joke that will do the job trust me it's easy to shoot longer barrel guns have a longer sight radius so if you line them up uh, you have a better chance of hitting accurately the double action trigger on the Smith & Wesson 686 especially for being a budget gun is very very smooth it's easy for people to use and revolvers are simple if you see a revolver on a table most people know how to pick it up and use it and most people know to be afraid of them as well which is nice uh, I like the 686 simply because I trust it we're talking about a gun that you would bet your life on and I would absolutely bet my life on this I have a thousand rounds through this gun no problems whatsoever shoots and hits everything I need it to it's simple it's smooth the controls are right where they're supposed to be there's no frills on this gun nothing to fall off nothing to go wrong uh, no magazine springs or anything like that that are any sort of issue you thumb the rounds into the cylinder and that's the ammunition that you have until you need to reload. Simple, easy, useful, and the 686 is still around today because this platform of firearm is still doing it and it's been doing it. At number five, we're gonna be talking about our first shotgun, Benelli M4. Now, the Benelli M4 is my personal favorite shotgun as far as the semi-automatic shotguns for home defense, simply because of the test that the Marines did to it, the reliability that it's had not only in European law enforcement, but American law enforcement, the track record that it has with professionals is pretty astonishing. I don't know a lot of people who've ever used the Benelli M4 that regretted that they had one when a situation required a long gun. As far as shotguns go, a semi-automatic has its pros and cons. It's faster to shoot, it eliminates a lot of user error when it comes to short stroking the pump, however it induces a lot of mechanical error. The Benelli's gas system is very unique, used in very few guns and it was the one that invented it. It is a self-cleaning system that allows you to run the gun longer and harder without having to clean it or maintain it in any way. Overall, it's probably the most reliable and durable semi-automatic shotgun, and if you're looking for a shotgun that holds five or seven plus one that you can get out with every pull of a trigger, the Benelli M4 is really hard to beat. With an 18-inch barrel, it's easy to maneuver through structures, especially if you know how to short stock and things like that. It's easy to load. It comes with big controls that are hard to miss, and on top of that, again, it eliminates some of the user error of a pump or even a brake action. You load the gun up, and trust me, that's all the ammunition you're gonna need. I know one of the downsides of shotguns is capacity, but if you look at home defense statistics, the likelihood of you needing more than seven rounds of 12 gauge is pretty much ridiculous to even consider, honestly. That being said, you can port load and load single shots, which is easy, especially if you run out of that seven rounds, but the reality of the Benelli M4 is that it's an unbelievable lethal caliber, especially close range. It's easy to point with its ghost ring sights. They're very intuitive, very fast. The 18-inch barrel is, again, not only easy to move through structures, but it's easy to transition between targets as well. As far as bet your life reliable, though, if I had to pick a shotgun, it would certainly be the Benelli M4, not just because of the military testing, but my own personal testing and the track record of it with military, law enforcement, and civilians. In at number four, we have the BCM AR-15. Now, I struggled to put an AR-15 on this list because if you're talking about reliability versus the AK platform, especially in adverse conditions, the AK is probably more of your go-to. But for me personally, I don't consider just mechanical reliability. I consider me, like how reliable am I with the firearm? How likely am I to induce a malfunction loading the gun? How likely am I to induce a malfunction unloading or reloading the gun? How likely am I to get in the way of moving parts? For example, the SCAR-17 is an incredibly reliable design, but the ones with the reciprocating charging handle, I am likely to induce a malfunction, so I do not use that gun. That's not a problem with the system, it's a problem with me, so I err toward this. And since this is my list, what would I grab? I'd grab a freaking AR-15 and I'd grab something that says BCM on the side of it. I own about 10 of these guys now. I own a couple of Daniel Defenses. I own a couple of higher end guns, a couple of lower end guns. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I have a lot of ARs. But as far as my go-to, everything I use for home defense 
is a Bravo company. Part of that is because I'm just used to it, I'm accustomed to it, and I know that they work. I know that if I use their design and I put regular ammunition in it, I will see no failures as long as I clean the gun once every thousand rounds and lube it once every 500. And that's not even a high maintenance system. I know that this gun is gonna work with the ammunition I use. This is 75 grain Hornady, and I like that ammunition because I've seen ammunition tests with it. It works with my gun, and I know that not only will this gun function, it will actually do what I need to do to the intended target, which is the other portion of this video. I know I can shoot more accurately, quicker, and I can operate this gun better than I can an AK. Am I saying that you shouldn't get an AK? Absolutely not. Am I saying that you shouldn't get like a Colt or you shouldn't get a SIG AR and you should just get a BCM? Absolutely not. I'm simply saying what works for me is Bravo Company. And if you have an AR-15 company, manufacturer, or model that you like the best in place of this, then by all means, use that as long as you've tested it with the defensive ammo that you use. I think that's very important. I like the AR-15 because not only is it accurate and reliable, especially under home defense style settings, they're unbelievably reliable. As long as you maintain your gun, you don't put sand and Twinkies and shit in it, it's gonna work great. There's actually a video on YouTube where people put Twinkies in a in an AR and an AK, but. <laughs> you can find anything on the YouTube. Yeah, you can, that's for sure. But I also like it because of its ergonomics and I like it because of its low recoil. By comparison to the AK, in my experience, when you give this to new shooters and F shooters or people that just simply don't live the gun culture life like many of us do, the AR-15 is just a simpler, easier system to use. It, you don't have to rock the magazines in, it's really, really easy. You just pop the magazine in, pull the charging handle back and flip the safety down and you're ready to go. A rifle in particular has a lot of points of contact and more intuitively to shoot and they shoot a caliber that's more capable, especially in home defense distances. Uh, 5.56 is very capable, 7.62 by 39 is very capable, 308 is very capable, but 5.56 in my personal opinion probably works the best. In at number three, we have the gun that most of you probably thought was gonna be at number one. The Glock 19, the Glock 17, or the Glock 19X. Either one works. And the reason why they're all on this list is because they're all basically the exact same gun with the exact same action. They even take the exact same parts. They just simply have a larger or smaller grip or a larger or smaller slide. It's pretty simple, really. Uh, I like the 19X, it's a good mix. I like the 17 and I like the 19 and I couldn't decide. So I put them all at number three. And if you don't like that, you can fight me about it. I like the Glock 19 in particular so much because it is absolutely time tested. It's the most produced gun of all time. It's the most used gun in law enforcement of all time. And it's it's certainly been in lots of military engagements as well. It's good in adverse conditions, it's good when it's clean, it's good for new shooters, it's good for advanced shooters. It's a simple, easy, no frills design that doesn't break and it doesn't really need to be maintained all that much. As far as like 1911s, 2011s, and some of your more Gucci guns, they're gonna need to not only be clean, but lubed frequently. The Glock doesn't need it all that much. And I know a lot of you online gun reviewers say they hate when people say that. But the sad reality is, is that this gun right here, the 19X, now has almost a thousand rounds through it. I haven't cleaned it at all. <laughs> it just works and works and works. And you shouldn't do that, but you can. And that shows how much you can bet your life on these guns. Not only are they simple, they fire a capable caliber. You usually have 15 to 17 plus one, which is more than enough capacity to handle most situations. They are light capable. You can put dots on them if you like, and you can carry them in a multitude of holsters. Not only that, but it's something like a Glock 19 or a 19X, you can carry all day, you can take it home, and you can still use it for home defense, and it would be very, very effective. As far as guns you can bet your life on, Glock for sure is right at the top of the list. As a matter of fact, I've been carrying Glocks for many years because of that. But I think there's still one handgun that I think might be a little bit more reliable than this gun is. Before we get to that handgun though, I wanna to get to number two, and that's gonna be the Mossberg 590. Now this is actually a shockwave, but it's still a 590. It's just in a shortened any other weapon configuration, and I use this because it's a lot easier to use when we're on camera. That being said, a stock is always better. The Mossberg 590, in my opinion, is probably the most time-tested and the most durable and the most reliable pump shotgun. Now, pump shotguns have one big failure when it comes to reliability. Well, I should say two, and that is plastic ammunition being left in the gun for a long period of time, being smushed down by spring pressure. So make sure to always shoot your gun every once in a while, change out that defensive ammo, and the second thing you're gonna need to do is know how to operate the gun. Pump shotguns are one of the most reliable platforms of all time with any type of ammo because they are not gas dependent or they are not ammunition dependent to cycle the gun. You have to do that. You grab the pump and you push it all the way to the rear and pull it all the way to the front. Nothing else. Nowhere in between, not half-assed, 
not as hard as you possibly can, you gotta get it right. But once you get it right and once you get used to it, it becomes intuitive and you don't even realize you're doing it anymore. It just takes a little bit of training. But once that training is complete, this is one of the cheapest, most lethal, and most effective weapons ever devised. You can get one of these, even the 500 series is more than included with the 590. You can get one of these for anywhere from 300 to 600 bucks, and you can essentially fend off a team of polar bears from your house. That's how effective these are. If the Coke polar bear comes over and he tries to raid your fridge, I got one of these. It's lethal enough to take anything in North America, including two-legged game. The capacity is anywhere from five shots up to 10, depending on what kind of barrel length and what kind of capacity and tube that you decide to put on it, whether you buy a competition version, whether you buy a cruiser version with an 18 inch barrel, you usually get about a seven inch capacity. If you're getting one of these, you usually get about a five. Shotguns are uh, dependent on the barrel length for capacity because they have a, uh, a tube that runs below the barrel here that actually feeds the rounds in. The reason for that is, is because of the ammunition type. But they're easy to short load, they're easy to keep uh, ammunition on the gun, they're, they're super, super lethal as the conversation we had with Buckshot with the M4, that same ammunition is just as lethal in the uh, Mossberg, but whereas the M4 is recoil dependent, you can't put like lighter loads in it. This you absolutely can. You can put mini shells in this. You could put bird shot in this. You could literally shoot anything that says 12 gauge with a Mossberg 590 or 500 because again, you pump the action. So I think that makes it a hair more reliable and durable overall compared to the M4. And if you're looking for a pump shotgun, I like the Mossberg because the quality didn't fall off like the 870. The 870 and the Mossberg were tied essentially for the most capable shotgun for that price point for like 50 years. And Remington decided to start putting out terrible guns. Mossberg has not. So now I err on the side of Mossberg. The other thing I like about the Mossberg is that the safety is universal. So if you're right or left-handed, it's easy to operate that tang mounted safety as opposed to the uh, cross bolt of the 870, which I have never personally liked. You can also mount lights and accessories on these if you need to, and the Mossberg 500 is one of the most produced shotguns of all time, so any weird grips or you know chainsaw attachments or anything you want to put on there, you're more than welcome to. Um, chainsaw attachments are not very durable and reliable, but they sure as shit are scary. Now, for my uh, honorable mentions, which there will be several, but not enough. And the reason why I say that is because there is an awful lot of guns out there, this is America after all, that you can bet your life on, and I'm never gonna be able to get to them all on this list, or even on the honorable mentions, but gonna mention a couple of my favorites that came to mind. The uh, first thing I wanted to mention would be the runner up to the MP5, which is gonna be the CZ Scorpion. I've had multiple versions of the CZ Scorpion. I absolutely love the gun, and it's stone cold reliable, and it does everything the MP5 does for less money. It just doesn't have as much recoil control, or as much military track record. That being said, that's actually starting to pick up. I also wanna mention the Staccato C2. It's the most reliable and durable 2011. It's absolutely fast and accurate, and I would absolutely bet my life on it. That being said, as far as reliability goes, just because it's 2011 platform, I usually err on the side of some of these guns we have here. On top of that, military law enforcement track record is non-existent. I also wanna mention the Wilson Combat 1911. My favorite 1911, I have 2,000 rounds or 3,000 rounds through it or something now. I don't keep track anymore, and absolutely no malfunctions, unbelievably reliable. That being said, short capacity and it's very expensive. I also wanna mention the Colt Python. You can't put the 686 and the Ruger GP100 on a list without the Colt Python guys coming to kill me. And I know I, it's a very reliable and durable gun, don't get me wrong. It just does the same things those guns do, but it's just more money. I also wanna mention the HK USP. How could you not? One of the most reliable handguns of all time, but they also are very hard to find and they're not as accurate and fast as these guns. Finally, I wanna mention mention the AK variants for you AK guys. I know AKs should be on the list. I just don't use them much and I don't use them for home defense, so they just didn't get a spot. Sorry. Finally, I wanna go to number one, and that is gonna be my controversial pick. It is gonna be the CZP07. And for the people that have ever seen a list of reliability on my channel, this thing is always on there. And the reason why is, is because it's so damn reliable. I have so many rounds through this. I trust this gun so much. It shoots so smooth. It's so easy to use this in a multitude of situations. I could throw a light on this and use it for home defense, no problem, 15 plus one, very easy to use. Super lightweight, super safe to carry as well, especially appendix because it does have a double action trigger. You do have that double strike capability. Any torture test, any reliability test you've ever seen on these guns, it's absolutely fantastic. And overall, I think it's the most reliable handgun personally I own. I've shot a lot of handguns, almost every handgun handgun and I would 
Trust this one with my life, no question. And again, the way that I pick this list is, I, if I have all these guns on the table, which one am I gonna pick? Am I gonna pick the Glock? Am I gonna pick the Smith & Wesson or the 226? Nope, I'm going with this guy. I do a lot of drills with this. I do a lot of drills where I'm laying rollover prone, I'm shooting the gun upside down, I'm shooting it with my left hand, and there's no short stroking on this. There's no ammo requirements. I can't just shoot 115 through this or 147 grain. This gun absolutely loves hollow points, and over Overall, wow, what a phenomenal gun. Uh, I err on the side of double single action because I'm an old man and I like the CZP07. My list, my choice, and the CZP07 wins all day long. I'm not saying that for you it's gonna be more reliable than the Glock, but it sure as shit is gonna be as reliable. Oh, also the P07 is like $450, so it's probably the best deal on the table as well. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. I love when you say over penetration. <laughs> Better be careful, I might over penetrate you. Mm. Mm. Let's get this done. <laughs>